The uh, God is good. God is good. You know, it's interesting. We've we've had a lot of rain, but it's interesting how things start to dry up so quick. And uh, so, this was some much needed rain, and and it sounds like it was uneventful as far as causing any damage or anything. So we're always we're always blessed by that. So, well. We started a series about four weeks ago, <clears throat> and it was all based around uh, this statement, who do you say you are? And uh, as we've said through the weeks, it's, you know, it, it's, it's almost saddening as to how far down the list, if, if it's not even on the list, our relationship with Christ is doesn't isn't said when that statement is asked uh, we started by looking at scriptures uh, relating to salvation as we know at the Roman road and uh, then as believers we uh, we are new creations you know it's interesting you know we are new creations. We didn't just change it. When we became believers, it wasn't about just changing our behavior. It wasn't about changing the direction we were headed. It was we were new creations. We were no longer the same. When we are saved, we are no longer the same, but new. God created a new work in us. A new being in us. The old has passed away. All things are new. And then we, we looked at, we're heirs of the king of kings. We are, we talked about that a little bit, about, about what it is to be an heir. And, and so we are heirs of the king of kings, the creator of all things. As children of God, we are heirs to all that he has to offer. Then last week we, uh, we looked at, we are redeemed by the blood. We're redeemed by the blood. We're forgiven. We're overcomers. When the battle seems heavy we are overcomers because Christ the spirit that lives within us Amen. well today we're going to look at we're ambassadors we're ambassadors of Christ or for Christ let us pray father we just come to you this morning i just thank you so much for your for your goodness. Father, I thank you for your love for each one of us. Father, I thank you for your working in each one of us. I mean, we could we could go and <clears throat> we could go through the room and ask and, and each individual could share something where you've touched their lives and you've changed their lives or you've blessed them in one way or another. Father, I thank you for your touch there. I thank you, and I, I pray that you would help us to continue to stay focused on your goodness and all that you are doing for us. As the enemy just rises up around us and the storms rage, that you might just continue to keep us focused on Jesus, that, that we might be assured of your presence with us. Father, I pray for your presence here today, and Father, that you just open the eyes and ears of uh, the ears of the hearts of each one of us to receive what you have for us today. Because each time we gather together and we, we share your word, that you have you have a message for each one of us. You want to speak to each one of us. Father, you want, to, you want to comfort each one of us. You want to instruct each one of us. You want to encourage each one of us. 
that we're not alone. And I thank you for that. So, Father, just help me to stay out of the way today and just share what you put on my heart. And I just give you honor and praise for that in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. Well, I want to start by reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to read, uh, read verses 17 through 21. Second Corinthians, did I say first? Second, Second Corinthians, chapter 5, beginning in verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not in putting their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become righteousness of God in him. Mm. When we think about being ambassadors, we think about being representatives. You know, you hear about ambassadors more about the have ambassadors from different countries that represent their country to another country. You know, it's really no different. I mean, as ambassadors for Christ, we represent Christ to those that we encounter, to those that he puts in front of us. We represent Christ. Should be that we represent that in everything, in the way we act, the way we speak. You know, we say it time and time again, but in reality, as believers and as children of God, nobody should ever have to ask us if we are. Let that sink in a minute. You know, there's this saying that, that we, we preach the gospel and sometimes we use words. We share the love of Jesus and sometimes we use words. Now, we have to be careful because we can get caught up in, in the works part of that to where we feel like that by doing, by doing all the good stuff and by doing all this, is that's, how we, that's, that's why and how we're children of God, and that's not true. We're children of God because of His grace. When we, when we think about being ambassadors, it's important to remember this. First off, that I'm going to use the I because I want to make this personal. I am his workmanship. I am his workmanship. You are his workmanship. As a believer, we are his workmanship. In Ephesians 6, Excuse me, Ephesians 2, 8 and 10. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. 
For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. You know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but you think about it. When we talk about he knew us before we were conceived. He knew and he had a plan for us. He had a desire in his heart for a way that we would walk. And most of us didn't do that for a long time. Some, it took longer before he got a hold of us and straightened us out. But his purpose for us was the same from the time we were conceived. He had a purpose that we would, that, that we would be used by him. <coughs> we are his workmanship. He created us. He gave us, he created us to be how he purposed us to be. No mistakes. You're not, you're not, I'm going to say this because I know you and I love you. You're not short because it was a mistake that you weren't tall. Okay? God doesn't make mistakes. We get off the road sometimes. Some of us stay off the road a long time. But God doesn't create mistakes. We are God's masterpiece, a work of art, a workmanship. If, if, can, if God considered us as his masterpiece, think about this. If God created us as his masterpiece, then we dare not treat ourselves or others with disrespect or as inferior work. How many times do we get, do we allow the enemy to get our mind set on that, that we're just misfits or we're just, you know? Not according to the word, as believers, we are new creations in Him. As believers, Everything that we need, everything that we need to, to fulfill His purpose in our life, He's created us to be. He's given us the talents. He's given us all. It is in and through Him that we glorify the Father. I'm strong. And when I say I'm strong, I'm not talking about physical strong because that's not what being strong is about. Sometimes, sometimes being strong is, is being weak. Sometimes being strong is when you're faced with a confrontation, it's turning around and walking away. Just want to touch on a few scriptures right quick. In the Old Testament, Nehemiah 8:10. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and spend portions to those, send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this is the day, this day is holy, and 
to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Isaiah 41.10 Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Exodus 15.2 The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Mm. Then I want to read Ephesians 6, 10 through 20 for you, because Paul puts it this way. <laughs> and it's important to understand that this is, this is a time when Paul is in chains, in prison. Starting in verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with the truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an, ab an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Mm. <laughs> Here, Paul's in prison in chains and he's still talking about wanting to Glorify God and be bold in his witness. Be bold in his witness. Luke fourteen twenty three. We we read this. This is this is a parable of Jesus that Jesus gave of the, the parable of the Great Supper. And uh, I want to read it, and then I read this this one verse. Fourteen twenty three reads, "Then the master said to the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled." Throughout this. I'm not going to read it all, but throughout this parable, he's talking about he's he's talking about the a master that that has prepared this great feast, and he sent out the invitations for those to come to the feast. But then he sends out his servants to see, and and the ones aren't coming. So when they come back and give him the master the report of that, he tells them to go out then. And invite those that they run across to come, to come, enjoy the feast.
There could be many interpretations of this, and I'm sure there are, but this is my interpretation of this. His invitation, him, God, Ben, his invitation is for the whole world, for the whole world to come to the feast. Some have not yet heard that invitation. There are some, it's hard to believe, but there's some in the world that have, have literally not heard that invitation. But then there's some who have heard it, but they, have not, they haven't come to receive it. And they've used all sorts of excuses of why not to come. Why not to come to the table? You think about it. In this parable, in this parable, there, there, it, it talks about that. It says, says there's many different, there's different excuses. Some, they just bought a, pro, a section of some land. One just got married. First, I mean, it was first one thing, then the other. I mean, there's just variable excuses in that to keep them from coming to the, to the feast. Boy. It relates. How many excuses have we heard for people that don't want to come to the feast? That hear the word, hear the promises, but don't want to, to come to the feast and receive. <laughs> we could take that some other places, and, but I won't today. Few of the, a few of the excuses they used in the, at this particular time is uh, one first said, I have bought a piece of ground and I must go and see it Ask for me to be excused. Another said, I have, have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to test them. I ask you to have me excused. Still another having married a wife and therefore cannot come. All sorts of excuses. And like the servants, I believe we are, we are to go out and invite these that we encounter to come to the feast. We're to go out and invite those to come to the feast by our words, by the words of our testimony, and even by our actions. So his house may be filled. We are to go out. What excuses are we using not to share? Do some of our excuses for not sharing sound somewhat like <laughs> somewhat like these excuses we read in, in Luke? Maybe we're just too busy. Something else. Maybe we maybe we we don't feel like we're uh, qualified. Uh, and the list could go on and on and on and on. We need to understand that if we if we feel a lack of lack of being qualified, then we need to revisit our position with Christ because it's not about our ability, it's about him in us and through us. Amen. Amen. So Go back to Second Corinthians five and <clears throat> verses twenty and verses twenty and twenty one again. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us. 
we implore you in Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. We are ambassadors for Christ. As believers, we are ambassadors for Christ. Are we going to be perfect? No. But, but our relationship with the Father should be reflected in just in our, you know, just our spirits should reflect that. You say, well, I've had hard times. Things aren't going like I... (laughs) It's not about that. It's about the Holy Spirit that indwells within us because of our trust and faith in Him. All through scriptures it talks about the storms and the things that we'll face, but yet how God has made us overcomers. God has delivered us because of the price that was paid for us. We are His workmanship. We are a new creation. Praise God for that. (laughs) The God that created all things has called us to be His children. And through faith and trust in that word, in that promise we are his children heirs to the king of kings amen and amen no battle that rises up against us is bigger than the the God that lives inside us well father I thank you so much for your word father I thank you Father, and I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, you would just, you would just continue to strengthen each one of us, Father, continue to, to, to help each one of us to get our own shortcomings, whatever, whatever's keeping us from just allowing you to flow freely through us. Father, I just pray that you open that up now, that you free us from that now in the name of Jesus. Father, just take all the doubts, all fears, remove it all. Father, when it comes to fears of not thinking that we'll say the right thing, Father, I, I pray against that. Because your word says that when we surrender to you, that you will give us the words to say at those times. And I thank you for that. Because I know in my own life, I I can't think of the right words all the time. In myself, I can't think of the right words. I, I can't even think of the right actions all the time. Father, help us to just continue to, to surrender to your direction. Your purpose in our for our lives. trusting totally on you because you get all the glory and all the honor. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen.